Welcome to this edition of the Savvy Nonfiction Writers Club and this month I want to cover line editing and in the following video I'm going to explain how you can line edit your articles prior to publication quickly and easily. And in this short video I want to give you one tip that will help you become a better writer. And my tip for you is to omit needless words and it's not actually my tip it's Ernest Hemingway who said this. Uh, Ernest Hemingway, the famous American novelist and writer, and he was big into editing and pruning down his work uh, until only the essential remained. And in this short video, I'm going to explain how you can omit needless words using a free tool. So let's dive in. Okay, so what I have here on screen is Hemingway Editor. Uh, I have the desktop version of Hemingway Editor for a Mac, uh, but there's a small fee for the desktop version, but don't worry. Hemingway Editor also has a web version that you can use and that's free and it does everything that the desktop version does. The only reason why I use the desktop version is I don't like to get distracted by what's in my browser or by what's on the news when I'm trying to edit a piece of writing. Okay, so what I've done is I finished my article in Google Docs or in Word or Scrivener or whatever the writing tool of the day is and I've saved it here to my clipboard for the purpose of this video. And I'm gonna paste it into Hemingway Editor. And this is something I do before I press publish on a blog post, for example. So let's paste in a 1,500 word article that's nearly ready for publication. So I've pasted it into Hemingway Editor. So let's talk through uh, what you can see on screen. Hemingway Editor is saying that the grade is, the readability is grade three, and that's good. So yes, you want to write your article and ensure that it has a lower grade so that it has a better readability for your audience. You don't want clunky and complicated language because it will put readers off and they'll click through to something else and nobody wants that. <clears throat> the second thing is it gives me my word count, which is great. And I can click on this and see how long it'll take readers to read it and get a bit more detailed about my word count. But what I'm actually interested in is what Hemingway editors highlighted in blue, green, purple, yellow, and red. So let's start with the red. Two of the 148 sentences are very hard to read. So what have I done wrong? Let's look at the first one that's highlighted in red, the introduction. Several readers recently emailed me asking, how can I become a better writer? And I told them that. I'm getting tired even reading that aloud. No wonder it's hard to read. So what I would suggest here is to delete the word and, press full stop, move this on to the next line. There's a typo here, let's delete that and let's clarify the sentence a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, it's highlighted in yellow, so it's gone from very hard to read to hard to read. Let's read it aloud again. I told them that the right answer to how to become a better writer or even a good writer depends on what level you're at and what you write. And do I want to make a change to that? Well, if I do want to clarify it, what I could do is I could remove this bit And you can see it's no longer highlighted in yellow. Uh, but in this case, I actually want to leave the sentence as is, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, so I'll put it back the way it was, and I'm gonna make a judgment call here and say that I'm okay to have this highlighted in yellow. And the reason why I want this one highlighted in yellow is I'm specifically answering the question, how can I become a better writer? And I want to include this in the opening paragraph uh, so people can find this article easier. And Google and so that readers will understand what the article is about. So what I'm getting at here is sometimes you've got to make a judgment call about whether you should make the edit or move on. Let's move on to the next one that's highlighted in yellow. <clears throat> For example, Stephen King may think success means topping the New York Times bestseller list, but suffice with a typo to say he did not email me. So I think we can make that easier. And uh, let's click correct the typo, move this on to the next line, put it in brackets. I was being a bit flippant here and we can delete for example. There you go. So I've decided to leave this one in yellow and I decided to clarify this one. Now we have another sentence that's very hard to read. Years ago success for me means writing pretty little sentences and now these days. Okay so there's clearly it's hard to read because I've made another mistake. What was I thinking? So years ago success for me meant writing pretty little sentences. And we've got it highlighted in yellow today. Becoming a better writer means writing something that helps readers. And maybe we could delete more of that in a moment, but I'm gonna make another judgment call and leave that in because I want to encourage people to keep reading. Okay, so I've fixed everything that's highlighted in red. 
I've decided that these sentences, I'm okay with them being in yellow, but it's really up to you to decide whether you want yellow sentences or not. What I would say is if you're struggling, print out your piece of writing, step away from your computer, read it aloud, listen to the flow of it and how it sounds. And if you're happy with the flow of it and how it sounds, then it's fine to leave it in. It's up to you to make a judgment call because you're the owner of your piece of work. So let's move on. Two phrases have simpler alternatives. What are these phrases? Okay, so I can ha I found one here. On the other hand, and when I highlight it, Hemingway Editor is giving me a bit more information. On the other hand, the more experienced writer may not have trouble writing every day. Well, do I need that? Uh, probably not, so let's just get rid of it. A more experienced writer may not have trouble writing every day. That's fine to me. But there's another problem. It's telling me there's an adverb in the sentence that I should remove. And generally adverbs, you should remove them because they weaken your sentences. He ran quickly, he ran slowly, and so on. You could just say he sprinted or he walked. In other words, find a better word or omit those needless words that Hemingway talked about. A more experienced writer may not have trouble writing every day consistently. Well, to write every day and to be consistent is the same thing. So let's get rid of that. Okay, and what I would do is I would work my way through my article deciding what to remove and what to edit and what to clarify. Uh, now it's telling me there's an instance of the passive voice. And you should almost always kill instances of the passive voice in your writing. It's lazy writing. And I have a good example here of some lazy writing on my part. I was talking about somebody who set a goal with me and I said, so it was decided that he set this goal. I mean, who decided it? Well, what, that makes no sense. So well, let's change that. So we agreed on this goal. Great, I've got rid of that instance of the passive voice. And apparently another one has made its way into this piece of writing. So, so let's try and get rid of that one too. Or work at an agreement with an editor whereby your work is reviewed, whereby he or she reviews your work. That's better. And oh, look here, one phrase is a simple alternative. It's telling me it doesn't like however. Do I want to remove that? Well, I suppose I could. I could probably use the word yet instead. Um, so there you go. The Hemingway Editor is a useful way of line editing your work. As I talked about previously, if you're struggling with digital tools, just print out your work and read it aloud. That's, that's a great way of line editing your work too. Hemingway Editor is free and it's something I use to check my book chapters and articles prior to publication.